I always told my wife, like, the only way that I would leave my my family a little bit early is if I got a head job in the NHL. And I told her, don't worry, it'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I uh, planted honey, the you're seed in the right hall there. Of fame. It could happen. <laughs> no, but it's a possibility uh, here. So how how did that dream job come about? Like, was it just like did you at the time when the job opened up? Had you handed in a resume? Did you ask for this no. meeting? So somebody reached out to you, what knowing that you had this professional itch? Did they maybe listen to Ra ask that question on that podcast six years ago? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, possibly. Gordon got hired. Jeff Gordon got hired. I I had uh, you know played under him in New York. Uh, my last two years, I had a great relationship with him, and um, he hired Kent Hughes. You know, Kent and I, you know, go 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 way back. Kent was actually Kent's like four or five years older than me. He went to Middlebury. Um, I went to Vermont. Uh, he he used to be like my Kent counselor a couple summers at camp uh, back in Montreal. He's from Montreal, so am I. So, you know, we. We were acquaintances for a long time. We became close friends. You know, he was Vinny's uh, Le Cavalier's agent, so I'd see him quite a bit. Uh, and when I retired uh, and started coaching my kid, I was coaching against Kent. Uh, Kent had uh, coaching the uh, Boston Junior Eagles. I was coaching Mitz Fairfield. We play each other all the time. So we spent a lot of time together in hotel lobbies and uh, hotel bars. <laughs> and uh, both both of our boys went to the national team program together, um, and uh, the, the the boys lived together over there. So, you know, we became really close. And uh, and, and when Kent got the job, he approached me about it, and um, uh, you know, it was a great opportunity for me. And and um, honestly, I felt like you know it's something I always wanted to do. Uh, I felt that uh, you know my last you know seven, eight years playing. I was already preparing for that without really knowing uh, when that was going to be, you know, coaching the kids. Uh, I was still like so valuable preparing me for what I'm doing now. And probably the biggest thing that I did that helped me, especially in the market that I'm in right now, is, is when I retired, I start doing uh, a lot of uh, public speaking, uh, talking, you know, with companies. Um, talking to their employees or whatnot about leadership, work ethic, uh, could be motivational, could be anything. They would steer me in the right direction. Sometimes it was just Q&As. But I became really comfortable. I was, you know, um, I was always okay in front of the, the cameras and stuff, but it's different when you're talking to a camera versus talking to an audience, you know, like um, in an auditorium or whatever. And, uh, you know, like when you're, you're speaking to your team and, uh, and obviously with, you know, the, the media that we have in Montreal, it's not two or three cameras. It's a lot of people in there. I think it prepared me very much. I didn't really know that it would prepare me the way it did, but uh, uh, it was really good for me. I was just going to ask you about like the the patience it probably took to to coach your kids and how much that translated over, because I think it's fair to say the the the, the players in the NHL not only are younger now, but you have to deal with them in a different way. And given the fact that you've kind of experienced those latter years of, you know, the tort style coaches and like learning how to communicate with these younger guys, how much did that benefit you hopping into this role? Because even that clip came out of you working with Cole Caulfield and more of a, from a player development standpoint, like that's got to really resonate with these younger guys. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, again, I, I really, you know, patience, a big part of it, you know, but you know, like, like, like I always say this, like everything Everything in life has an expiration date, you know, you know, we do, you know, everything. And I think patience has one as well, you know, like to me and, 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 and to me, the, the, the player's attitude and commitment will dictate how much patience you're going to have with them. But, uh, you know, for me, like looking back at my career again, I feel like, you know, all my experience really prepared me for the job that I have now, especially how, uh, the way the league is now, you know, because, you know, I was, you know, obviously I played college, but then I was an American League guy. I was a call up. Uh, I was a guy sitting in the stand in the NHL. Uh, you know, obviously I, I worked my way to, you know, being a top six, an all star, you know. So I feel like for me on my bench with my players, there's not one guy that I don't really understand what he's going through. So I feel like I can help each and every one of them, obviously differently. Uh, they all have their own expectation, 
Uh, they all have different type of pressures, uh, but uh, you know the the uh, that's probably one of my favorite thing to do is 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 coach the individual, which I think it's a big part. I think if you're able to coach the individual, I think collectively we're all going to benefit from that. But I feel as players in this league, my experience from my time in the NHL, I think the individuals got lost. You know, I think that everything was about coaching the team. You know, not the individual, and I think we've taken a huge step in development in many sports. Uh, you know, and that's something that I've been very uh, inside of that. In my last, you know, coaching the kids, and I, you know, I've done a lot of of research and how to, you know, and, and I've leaned a lot on a lot of people, and uh, you know, I've never been a guy that think knows it all, but I've always been somebody that's uh, willing to find the answers, and the answers are everywhere. Uh, but you just got to, you know, sometimes be patient to find them. And uh, so I would say patient is, 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 is huge in terms of finding those answers. And it's okay to not have all the answers, but it, it's, it's, it's a crime if you're not willing to find them. Marty, uh, were you, was Patty sort of surprised by uh, Montreal actually brought you in just because you were, had been coaching a kid's team before and didn't have professional experience? Was I surprised? Yeah, I was. Um, but, you know... I wasn't scared or embarrassed or, you know, I didn't come in like selling myself short. Uh, you know, how do you measure experience? You know, I, I said it in my press conference when I took the job. I have a lot of experience on the ice, on the bench, in the locker room, on the bus, on the plane. The only experience I didn't have is behind the bench in the NHL, you know. But, I mean, I know it's crazy because I've been coaching youth until then, but I was behind the bench for seven years. And to me, like, it's the same. The way you, you talk to the player, to a 12, 15, 17, you know, I was, I was coaching kids at the end, like, you know, 16-year-olds. Like, it's, it's, it's really the same. You, you, you're approaching kids with intentions of getting them better. That's going to help the, the, the group, the team. You do a respect with intentions and uh you know that's nothing different now running a bench yeah i mean at first like was i the best at it no i'm not still not the best at it but you know i'm getting better every time and 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 and, and only the certain situations that come that you learn from you know that 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 you makes you grow as a coach but it, you know it's a big part of the game to running a bench and i feel that uh uh, I've improved at that and I'm going to keep improving at that. And I know you don't want guys sitting on the bench too long. And, you know, sometimes it's really hard sometimes when it goes from you go on a power play, then it goes to like a quick, and now it's going to be four on four. <laughs> and now, oh, now we're going to be shorthanded. But now we're we're back five on five. And it's like, oh my gosh. And you're trying to, you know, to and, and, and the way you play the power play now, every guy, every, every team has one D, four forward. So how are you going to transition out of that? It's fun. The challenges are fun, and, and, and um, you know, it's all about, you know, growing. I'd have a hard enough time remembering to call the lines not getting caught watching the play. Does that happen? <laughs> Be like, Coach, who's oh, going? Fuck, I don't, I don't know. know. I'm trying to watch the game here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes uh, one of my assistant coach, Trevor Litowski, who's, who's usually next to me, he's like, Marty, who's up? He goes, oh, you know, yeah. Gosh, I was, I was <laughs> being a fan right now. I was watching the Jumbotron. You see that last? Go back and forth, and it's so good, right? And you're just watching. You're like, yeah. oh my God, I forgot to call the line. But the guys are good now. I'm like, who's up? You know, and, and I, I was the same as a player. Like, I've had coaches that were just so, like, you know, consumed by what was happening on the ice and, you know, uh, a guy or two, like, who's up? You know, and every time you snap out of it and you stop being a fan, you start, you know, coaching again. But uh, there's definitely those moments. Biz and I often talk about kind of the coaching style we grew up with. And you're, you're a little older than us, so you know what I mean. Like, there was a lot of negativity at times, and there was really being hard on players. And the game has certainly changed in coaching. But you're a fiery guy, right? Like, I'm guessing you're talking to guys in a different tone than you were talked to growing up and coached. But are there still times you got to kind of snap on the boys? I mean, of course there is time. But, like, to me, there's plenty of ways to get your message across. If you're constantly firing bullets, you're running out of, you know, you're shooting blanks, you know. So you have to be calculated when you're going to use your bullets. And um, you shouldn't, like, go right to that as soon as you're upset, right? I mean, I think the most important thing is there's got to be some, rash, you know, rationality as to, to come, you know, way more in front of, of, of emotional, 
you know, because if you just act on emotions, like, you know, you're going to get tuned out pretty quick, you know, you're going to run out of bullets. So I feel like I'm firm, you know, and, and I speak with intentions and, and, and like, you know, and when it's not going well, like, you know, there's times that, yeah, we got to reel the group in, but you know, the way, just the way the, the athletes are today, like, you know, I, I don't think you have to, to fire bullets like they used to. I really don't think so. I think, I think for, for co the way I see it as a coach is, 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 you know, you have to convince your player why we're doing certain uh, things, things a certain way. You have to convince them. And, and I think first and foremost, you got to convince your staff why we're doing this a certain way. You got to convince each other. And then once you do that, then you have to go convince the group. And, you know, and, and if we if we need to make adjustment and we're not getting what we want, you know, we got to convince them to do them better.